Though it is nowhere nearly as mobile as the acoustic guitar, the keyboard slash piano is a timeless and versatile instrument often used when leading worship. If you are a keyboard or piano player, or a worship leader who is trying to speak the keyboard or piano player's language and give them direction, we're going to walk through some super helpful tips in today's Weekly Worship Thoughts. The fundamental frequencies for a properly tuned 88 key piano range anywhere from 27.5 Hz at the low A all the way to nearly 4.2 kHz at the high C. That is an incredible span of frequencies. Taking into consideration that most keyboards have myriad other sounds available, there is no telling what frequencies you may venture into as a keyboardist slash pianist. Now this reality is one of the factors that makes the keyboard and piano so versatile. Of course, having the ability to play in so many frequencies does not necessitate that you should actually play in all of those frequencies. So we're sitting here at a piano and just wanna give you an idea of the low keys here. That is really low, all the way up to the top. Again, really high. Most piano players will stay near, somewhere around the middle C area. Which is also a little bit problematic because that's where so many other instruments are. If you're the lead instrument, obviously being a middle C is fantastic. But if you're not the lead instrument, maybe consider going up an octave. Just above middle C. The dynamic range of a classical acoustic piano is nearly as impressive as its frequency range. An acoustic piano can play beautifully soft one moment and thunderously loud the next. In fact, all of this can happen within the same musical phrase depending on how hard you are playing the instrument and whether or not you're utilizing its pedals. However, it should be noted that many keyboard players struggle to access this same dynamic range and feel on the electronic versions of an acoustic piano. And that's probably okay because it's very rare that you would actually need to access that kind of a dynamic range in a typical worship team setting anyway. So I am sitting at what kind of looks like an acoustic piano, but it is very much an electric piano and an acoustic shell. It's not quite an acoustic piano, I will admit that. You can still get some pretty great dynamics happening. I can, I can play pretty quiet. I can play it pretty loud, but it's not the same thing. Again, when you're using the keyboard, so many of your settings will change how the instrument reacts to your dynamics. Now the musical buddy for the keyboard slash piano depends on how the instrument is being played. If the piano functions as a foundational rhythm instrument, then its musical buddy would tend to be the acoustic guitar, the hi-hat, or even the bass guitar. If the keyboard serves more of a secondary role, then its musical buddy would be the lead vocals, along with the electric guitar or other auxiliary instruments. Always remember to pay attention to and play well with your musical buddy, leaving space for them to really shine. It is an ugly world when buddies fail to get along, and the keyboard slash piano player has a lot of potential musical buddies. So one of the things that the piano will do a lot of times playing with their musical buddy is they will throw little runs in between phrases. So a song I wrote called Great Things You Have Done kind of starts like this. I don't know how long I'll travel. And then we got. So it's a great space to kind of put something in there, but you don't really want to play over top of the lead vocals. If you are sitting down to play the keyboard or piano, you may want to just consider sitting on your left hand. If you're standing, go ahead and lock it into your left pocket. Now I'm kidding, kind of, but not really. When you're playing the keyboard or the piano by yourself, adding the left hand brings a beautiful tonal balance to the instrument. Using that left hand can provide that groovy bass rhythm that we all love, but when you're playing in the context of a full band, part of the trick for the keyboard slash piano player is to figure out in which frequency range they should hang out. Now remember that the keyboard slash piano has easy access to an impressive span of frequencies. It can fit right into a full band mix or it could quickly muddy the mix. An easy way to avoid the mud is by sitting on your left hand and playing just with your right hand in the octave above the acoustic guitar, which is typically an octave above middle C, which is ringing through around 260 hertz. Again, if you're gonna be in the middle C area, <laughs> 
then you're going to be right where everyone else is. And, and that's fine when you're by yourself, but when you're in a full band context, that bass guitar is right there where your left hand is, and the acoustic guitar is right there where your right hand is. So the best tactic for a piano player is, unless you're a lead instrument, if you want to cut through the mix is to actually jump up an octave to just above middle C and sit on this left hand right here. That's going to sound the best in the full band mix. If you are playing a keyboard and not an acoustic piano, you probably have access to more sounds than you realize. Occasionally the worship leader may ask for a xylophone sound, strings, or an organ. Your keyboard probably has those sounds. So take some time on your own to play through the vast sound library at your fingertips and take notes along the way. You never know when you may be asked to pull up a sound that only you can provide. So let's take a look at what this piano can provide for us. We'll start with just a regular piano sound that we've been using. One thing that's kind of cool is you can actually add like strings to the piano sound. So this would be an example of the piano with the strings on top of it. That can be kind of handy. You can actually layer these different sounds. Let's look at what it would look like if we're just using an electric piano sound, which is I actually kind of like a lot. Oh, that's mellow. I like that a lot. Uh, a lot of times for some of the songs in a worship setting, I like to use a B3 organ. Obviously, you don't want to carry that heavy thing around, but listen to how this sounds and producing it from the same source here. And this sounds really cool up high, by the way. One of the really cool modern sounds that we hear a lot in contemporary worship is the synthesizer. And there's a million different ways that you could program a synthesizer, but here's just an idea of what that sounds like. Kind of cool. And then finally, let's do something crazy. So let's get into something that maybe sounds a little bit more like that xylophone we were talking about. Kind of crazy. One of the sounds to which the keyboard player has unique access to is called a soft pad. Now the soft pad is a sustained musical texture that sits nicely just under the mix and provides a pleasant atmospheric feeling to the listener. This works well during a song, but it also helps a lot between songs as the worship leader is speaking or leading into the next song. A soft pad may consist of only a few notes, typically I use like the one in the five note of a chord. And you definitely do not want to hold down the sustain pedal while switching chords or both chords will jumble together and that's no good. Let's listen to what this soft pad sounds like. I've got a nice one pulled up here and this is just the one five of the C chord down low. And put it up top too. Depending on your keyboard setup, you may be able to layer different sounds, and this approach allows you to play, for example, an acoustic piano as the main instrument with that soft pad or maybe even strings layered beneath it. In this example, when you play a chord, you're going to hear the prominent acoustic piano chord, but you will also hear the soft pad or the strings playing the same chord. And there are countless ways to layer your sounds, especially if you're using a keyboard with built-in faders or a computer with a MIDI controller. This approach may take a bit of research and practice to figure out, but the payoff really is worth it. Because the keyboard has so many sounds from which to choose, you will want to pay attention to the volume difference between sounds and make adjustments accordingly. It is not conducive to the worship experience when a keyboard player switches from a low volume soft pad to a ruckus high volume B3 organ. This kind of adjustment sends sound men scurrying to find the fader while well-meaning worshipers lift their hands in fright rather than in worship. And this is not the effect we are striving for. If you are a keyboard slash piano player, what was one interesting truth or idea that stood out to you about your instrument? And how do you think that truth or idea will help you in the future? If you are not a keyboard slash piano player, what did you learn about how to effectively communicate with the keyboard slash piano players in your worship team? In your own words, how would you say the keyboard slash piano fits into the typical worship music pie? How big of a slice should they get? 
What is the main role for the keyboard slash piano in a typical worship team setting? How does the keyboard slash piano typically fit into your own worship team context? Do you think you typically give them too big of a slice, too small of a slice, or just right? Given the information you just received, what do you think is the number one thing that individual keyboard slash piano players in your specific worship team context should work on in order to improve the overall quality of the worship team as a whole?